Greetings Mac Warriors, hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is TTB and this is the Mac Builds Guide, the general guide to building your Macs effectively and have fun while doing so. Guys, Mac Builds, the variety of Macs, the variety of builds is one of the most endearing, most fun elements of Mac Warrior Online, tinkering with your Mac, adapting it to just suit your individual tastes. That is what this game is all about, and I'm going to help you to try and uh, build your own mechs. Now, there are about 2,000 videos on this channel where there are different mech builds that I use, so I'm not going to showcase you specific builds. I'm showcasing you how to come up with your own builds, how to come up with things that make sense. Now, for that, of course, we need the mech lab. Guys, very important, you do not win the matches in the Mac lab, but you might lose them there. You set yourself up for a potentially good or bad performance, depending on how well you build your Mac. So keep that in mind when building your Macs. Now, the different kind of build categories. Let's talk about them real quick. For example, there are so-called Meta Macs or the cookie cutters. Those are the Macs that perform very, very well above any and beyond. There are, for example, support Macs. Small caveat here, guys. Support max only make sense in coordinated groups. In solo queue, they are mostly useless and they lead you into this false support mentality as a kind of a get out of jail free card. Oh, I'm bringing AMS. I'm a support mech. I don't have to do damage. Wrong. Even if you have a somewhat supporty build, you still need to be able to help amplify your team damage and also share your armor with your team. So keep that in mind. Don't use a support build as a get out of jail free card. Now, then there are of course normal builds, anything that's not meta, but just works well for you or just works in general. There are fun builds that are less serious and uh, they or just things that might bring you some fun. For example, running around with flamers and then following up with some lasers or some ducker. There are meme builds, for example, the Learn 20 Locust or the UX 20 Boom Chicken and all sorts of different things that you can do. And then there are two more things, um, one uh, both of which I do not recommend. The number one thing would be lore builds or stock builds. Uh, guys, this is, Mac Warrior Online is not a tabletop game, um, so builds based on Battletech lore, based on pen and paper, uh, they don't work as well in this game. This is a shooter first and foremost, so it has its own laws, and uh, you're not rolling the dice to see if you hit an enemy and how much you hit them with. You're clicking somebody. So keep that in mind. Law builds in general, pretty bad. And the last thing I want to talk about is troll builds. Some people like to use troll builds, even some streamers like to use troll builds. Um, I highly recommend you stay away from them, because troll builds... Um, as the name intends already, guys, they're just there for trolling. Um, I would not recommend running them, especially not for new players. Um, you're just gonna you're just gonna ruin somebody else's fun and potentially your own fun with it as well. All right, guys. Now with that out of the way, generally speaking, how do you build Max? How do you build Max? Well. First and foremost, let's think about what mech do you want to build? What mech do you have available? What weight class is that mech in? Is it a light? Is it a medium? Is it a heavy? Is it an assault mech, for example, like this Annihilator 2A right here? Because once you know that, then you can think about what role do you want this mech to fill? Is it going to be a heavy assault? Is it going to be a supportive build that amplifies damage and uh, shares some armor? Is it going to be a missile build? Is it going to be a uh, laser build? Let's have to, you have to really think about like what's the role? Are you going to be a frontliner? Are you going to be somebody that fights at longer range, exposes at longer range? Are you going to pop tart? That is something that of course is governed by the mech model that you're looking at. For example, this annihilator is not going to pop tart. It might chainsaw somebody, but it's not going to pop tart because it doesn't have any room for jump jets. Now, the next thing you need to focus, I think about is when building a mech, which hard points do you have available? Let's use this annihilator as an example for, uh, right here. As you can see, there are currently four big guns on this bad boy. Right here, left torso and uh, right torso, which is actually the wrong way around. This is the left torso, this is the right torso. Keep that in mind, guys, it is a mirror image, right? So um, you can see we've got some ballistic weapons in those torsos, and I currently have no weapons in those arms, but let's say, for example, there were ballistics hard points in the arms as well. You have to consider where do you put your weapons. For example, with this current setup, um, do I put my weapons in the torsos, make them higher up, 
or do I put the weapons into the arms and make them so they can uh, shoot targets at better angles and generally track targets better? These are considerations you need to think about. Sometimes there are options. And of course, there's also the question about, do you have a pure build? By pure build, I mean, do you just go full on lasers or do you just go full on Dakar or do you just go full on missiles? Or do you go hybrid build? For example, uh, weapons that pair very well, let's say uh, ghost rifles and lasers or ghost rifles and missiles. There's lots and lots of options basically governed by the mech model that you have at your um, hands here. There's lots of options depending on which mech you're trying to build. Now, let's jump into the mech app loadout screen and I'm going to explain a couple of things here. Now, all we talked about right now is just external stuff. Now let's look into the internals of mechs actually. Now, as you can see in the mech loadout screen, uh, this is where you will be able to build your mechs. You will see your subsystems, your um, critical slots. You will see your components. You will see your arms, torsos, head, tor uh, center torso, of course, and left leg, right leg. In here, you will see some potential upgrades that you have for that. You will see the weapons that you have available, the ammo, the equipment, the engines, and the consumables. And we'll go over all of these in quick fashion. Now, one thing that we will need to look at is a thing called ghost heat. And ghost heat is something that is important to know about for players um, because not everybody knows about it. Um, and I will show you how that whole thing works. So let's say, for example, we had this uh, beautiful, awesome 8Q here. Um, remember when we talked about quirks um, building and, and skilling your mechs regarding to really, really good quirks that that mech might have? Well, this mech, for example, has a quirk that allows it to run triple heavy PPCs and shoot them at the same time. Heat scale limit on the PPCs plus one. But if I add a fourth PPC right here, PPC heat scale limit two, one further PPC because of the quirk. Here's the fourth PPC in. And if you look at that warning sign up here, you will see that warning, firing more than three PPCs or ghost rifles simultaneously will result in a heat spike higher than normal. This is what's called ghost heat. Um, if you have too many of the same weapon system, then the any, every weapon system above that will incur more heat and it will incur that at an exponential rate. So uh, if you have, for example, a mech build that runs, uh, I don't know, eight PPCs at the same time and you shoot them at the same time, your mech will instantly explode because you shoot the two PPCs, the third PPC has already a heat scale penalty, the fourth has an even higher and so on and so on. And you do a gigantic amount of damage to your mech instantly and you just go poof. So keep that in mind. Heat scale limits are normally very simply explained. Uh, normally it's a number of four or six. Four for clan heavy lasers, for example, clan heavy mediums. Um, six for medium lasers and the medium pulses. And uh, generally speaking, two for clan large pulses, three for inner sphere large pulses. Guys, just keep an eye on that warning triangle up there click on it and it will tell you exactly if you go over the heat scale limit. So keep that in mind, guys. Don't blow yourselves up. Now, let's talk about the um, elephant in the room. There's all these weapons available, there's all this ammo available, all this equipment available. What does it do? Let's talk about upgrades first because that's an important thing to know. I'm going to choose a different mech here as an example. Let's go back to that annihilator we had in the beginning. And let's look at subsystems that you can put in. So. From upgrades, you can see the armor is either standard, ferrofibrous, light ferrofibrous. Heat sinks can be single or double. Structure can be standard or endo steel. And the missile guidance can be standard or Artemis. Let's talk about the armor slot first. Standard armor doesn't do anything. You just have your standard armor. If you go to ferrofibrous, you will occupy 14 more critical slots in your mech. So let me showcase how that looks like. Let's just strip the whole mech here real quick. I will have nothing in here. Let's say we have nothing in here. Okay. And let's say, for example, you wanted to use ferrofibrous armor. As you can see, the available tonnage increased. Yeah, we're just using 23.4 tons now out of a 100 ton maximum instead of the 25 tons that we had before. So you're trading some critical slots for some extra tonnage that you can use on your mech. The same thing with light ferrofibers. This only occupies seven critical slots. 
These are these dynamic armor slots. They can move dynamically between parts. This will only occupy seven dynamic armor slots as opposed to the 14 from full ferrofibers, but as you can see, only lowered our full tonnage by 0 0.8. Much more effective is this thing right here. It's called endo steel structure. And again, standard, we have 25 tons available. If I use endo steel structure right here, it's also going to take up 14 critical slots. But as you can see, it lowered our overall weight by 5, so we have 5 tons available more to use for weapon systems or ammo or armor. So, speaking about that, as you can see, endo steel is actually a lot more effective than ferrofibers or light ferrofibers. So if you have the opportunity to get endo steel in, if you have a lot of free empty slots, endo steel is a good choice on most mechs. Sometimes you can't use endo steel. Sometimes you have so many weapon systems or other subsystems in a mech that you can only use light ferrofibers, for example, because you only have seven uh, critical slots free. I will leave that up to you. It's just a little bit of, of tinkering with your mech to make sure that you get the best system or the best loadout possible. But I would recommend, if you can, get endo steel. Then heat sinks, standard heat sinks or double heat sinks. Let's uh, go ahead and reset the mech real quick. Let's look at the heat management and especially look at the, the amount of heat sinks. If these were standard heat sinks, as you can see, the heat management, be careful this number is not accurate, it's going to be patched uh, in a future patch, is 1.2. If I move to double heat sinks, heat management right now is 1.51. So, double heat sinks are better at managing heat, better at cooling your mech, that is, than single heat sinks. Right here. For example, double heatsink, heat capacity is 0 0.5, dissipation rate is 0 0.22. 0 0.5 and 0 0.22. Standard heatsink has a heat capacity of 0 0.75 and a dissipation rate of 0 0.14. So, double heatsink dissipates heat faster. Single heatsink has a higher heat capacity. For beginner players, Use double heat sinks. Don't worry about single heat sinks. Single heat sinks are for a couple of very specific builds. And have, for example, mostly in the like a lot of energy weapons or a lot of missile weapons department, where you just need the extra heat capacity to make sure that you can fire a couple of full volleys before shutting down from overheat. Everybody else, just use double heat sinks and be happy with that. Now, we've talked about um, armor, heat sinks, and structure. Let's talk about missile guidance real quick because it needs to be mentioned. For missile guidance, this only pertains to the SRM weapons. And I'm going to showcase this on the example of the Griffin 2N. Missile guidance can be either standard or it can be with the Artemis subsystem. Now, what the Artemis subsystem does is it groups your missiles together a little bit better, but you are trading some tonnage and you're trading some slots. For example, let me just strip this whole mech here real quick. As you can see, this SRM-6 launcher occupies two critical slots and its tonnage is three. If I want to use the Artemis subsystem, by the way, that also works on LRMs, I misspoke there. So LRMs and SRMs, of course. Um, you will see that the SRM-6 of Artemis now occupies three slots as opposed to two, and its tonnage went up from three to four. You can also showcase that with the LRMs. Let's say, for example, an LRM-20 right here. This missile launcher has five slots to in total, and it occupies 10 tons. If I switch that over to the Artemis subsystem, all of a sudden we need uh, six slots, so one slot more, and one ton more, 11 tons in total. But as I said, Artemis will group your missile hits better together, so on some mechs it might be worth, for example, on this Griffin 2N, it is definitely worth using it because these are your only weapon systems, and you do have the tonnage provided, of course, you go with an XL engine in this case. Okie dokie, so we've talked about Ghost Heat, we've talked about the upgrade systems available. We've talked about single heat sinks versus double heat sinks. Remember guys, as I said, go with the double heat sinks as a beginner player. They are going to be much more helpful to you. All these upgrades, of course, cost a little bit of money in terms of C-bills, so be careful what you upgrade and make sure that you don't spend money unwisely because every time you change this, it is going to cost you some cash. 
The only thing we haven't spoken about yet is another armor upgrade, and I can showcase this to you uh, on the basis of, for example, a... where is it hiding? Let's say a Locust Pirate's Bane should have it. It's an armor upgrade called Stealth. Stealth is only available to mechs that have a hardpoint for Guardian ECM and uh, only for Inner Sphere mechs. And what Stealth does, uh, it will occupy the... Uh, let me just move this to Standard. As you can see, Stealth will also occupy um, a couple of critical slots, in this case 12 critical slots. And it will allow, allow you to swap your mech over to stealth mode where you're not visible on the radar and where you cannot see any targets on your own radar as well. We've talked about that already in the video about targeting and about the radar. Okay, okay, so now you see where stealth comes from. Moving over to the next important point, I already brushed on engines. Let's see what kind of example would be nice. Actually, that might be a good example with that Gurfin 2N. I'm going to strip this mech real quick and we're going to have a look at different engines. Engines come, generally speaking, in three varieties. Standard engines, XL engines and light engines. Now, there are some differences between Inner Sphere and Clans. Inner Sphere availability is standard, XL and light. Clan Max, however, only have standard and XL engines. What do these do? Well, let's have a look at an Inner Sphere engine here. Let's use a standard 300 engine, for example. 25 tons, boom, it's in your mech. 38 tons out of 55 used. With an XL engine, we could go ahead and get the same engine size, i.e. the same um, speed, the same top speed for our mech, because the engine governs top speed, reverse speed, um, and sometimes even well, at least it used to, the uh, turning speed of the mech, the agility of the mech. As you can see, that XL engine is going to come in at only 15.5 tons. So, 25 versus 15.5 tons on the XL300. But watch what happens when we put this in. 38 tons available, switching it out for the XL engine. All of a sudden, we have 28.5 tons used instead of 38, so we are saving... 9.5 tons but we're also gaining something right here and these are these three critical slots in the left torso and in the right torso and the problem with inner sphere light, uh, xl engine is if you're running an inner sphere xl engine and that torso gets destroyed any torso gets destroyed on your mech your engine explodes and you're dead so that is the trade-off you're gaining an engine that is a lot lighter but if you lose a side torso, you're dead. There is a middle ground here, however, and there, that is the light engine. Light engines, only available to Inner Sphere Max. As you can see, light 300 right here. Instead of 25 tons from the standard, it is 20.5 tons. So we're saving still 4.5 tons. And we have an engine that only uses two critical slots instead of three per torso. And... Here's the good news, if one of your side torsos blows up, you don't die instantly. However, you will die if both your side torsos get destroyed. So if your right torso gets destroyed and your left torso gets destroyed, then you die, even if your CT is still intact. What also happens here is if you lose a side torso on a mech with a light engine, in an inner sphere mech, you will get what's called a heat spike, where the heat that would normally be dissipated by the whole engine gets taken from the destroyed part and basically put into the, the undestroyed part. So you get a sudden increase of heat from the remaining heat that was in the destroyed side torso. And that can actually get you killed because let's say, for example, you are at, you're running a laser boat, you're shooting at targets, you're at 80% heat. Somebody destroys your side torso. All of a sudden, the extra heat that was stored in that side torso to be dissipated in that engine gets moved into the other side torso and all of a sudden you are at 120% of whatever total heat, instant shutdown or you might even explode very quickly. So uh, that's the trade-off right here. Light engine lets you live if you lose a side torso but be wary of that heat transfer. So uh, make sure that you don't have too much heat stored if possible if you're close to losing one of those side torsos. Another topic we need to talk about is engine internal heatsinks and heatsink slots. Now, if you have a look, for example, at this 
XL Engine 380, if we mouse over, you can see it has a total of 10 heat sinks inside the engine and it has five slots for double heat sinks. So you can go ahead and add heat sinks to this engine and basically socket them in there and save some space in your Mac. I can showcase this to you real quick. Let's say, for example, you just put in this XL380 engine. It has a total of 10 internal heat sinks and I could add up to five double heat sinks into this engine. This allows us to save some space by storing them in the engine. They will just work uh, the same way as they would work if they were in the Mac. Keep in mind, guys, that engines have a different number of internal heat sinks depending on the rating of the engine. Um, starting from the engine level of 250, you have 10 internal heat sinks. That is the minimum that you can use to run a Mac. If you would go with a lower engine, let's say a standard engine 190, for example, you will get an immediate warning and a heat warning because you will have to add heat sinks to get to the 10 minimum level. Since this has seven internal heat sinks, we have to add three double heat sinks to get to the level of 10 minimum heat sinks. So with an engine above the 250 rating, you have the 10 internal heat sinks already, so you don't have to worry about adding any additional heat sinks to be able to even pilot the mech. But as I already said, we can add some extra heat sinks into the engine to keep them uh, quote unquote safe from being crit out. And of course, um, save some space in your mech that you might lose use for like endo steel or specific armor upgrades or more weapons or more ammo. Okay, now we've talked about everything that pertains to um, standard light and XL engine on the inner sphere side. Let's talk about the clan side, because I already mentioned, guys, that on the clan side, um, either they're Omnimax, in which case you cannot fiddle with the engine anyways, or there are clan battle max available, where you can actually fiddle with the engine. And at that point, well, it gets interesting. Let's take the Vapor Eagle here. Let me just make sure that I'm selecting the correct model here, the Vapor Eagle 3, for example. Perfect. So that is a clan battle mech. Battle mech as in you cannot swap out subsystems, but you can swap out the engine. And uh, as you can see, for clans, there's only standard and XL. Because clans, well, clans are the cool kids. They only have two kinds of engines. Standard engine is standard as just in the inner sphere part. But Clan XL engines basically have all the benefits of the lightness of an XL engine combined with the same um, way of, of um, dealing with damage that as the Inner Sphere light engine. So Clan XL, you lose a side torso, no big deal. You can keep on playing, but you will get the heat spike. If you lose both side torsos with a Clan XL, you will die just as with a Inner Sphere light engine. All right. Let's sum this up. Standard engine, you can lose both side torsos, nothing happens. XL engine in a sphere, you're dead. Light engine in a sphere, you lose one side torso, you get a heat spike, but you live, you lose both side torsos, you are dead. Clan XL engine, you lose both side torsos, you are dead. One side torso gone, just gets you the heat spike. Another thing we need to talk about are quirks. Now, there are two different sets of quirks, and I'm going to showcase this with the store here real quick. Uh, let's say, for example, we go with, uh, again, a good example that I like to showcase is the awesome right here, the awesome 8Q. If you mouse over the Mac, you will see that it comes with a set of enhancements from the factory, and these are called quirks. These are specific bonuses that this mech gets, in this case 20% PPC velocity, minus 10% PPC heat generation, PPC family heat skill limit plus one, so this is why it can run three heavy PPCs and shoot them at the same time without incurring ghost heat, energy heat minus 10%, energy range plus 10%, and some extra base structure for the CT left torso and right torso. This is also true for Clan Max, but for Clan Max, it can be different. For Clan Max, um, it is that the Clan Max can either be Battle Max, in which case they might have quirks like in a Sphere Max, or they're Omni Max, and Omni Max are a different kind of breed. Let's say, for example, we take this Dire Wolf right here. Big boy, big 100 ton Clan Assault Mech. And if you look at this in the Mech Lab, the Omni Max have interchangeable weapon part, uh, interchangeable mech parts. So you can take side torsos, arms, cockpits, or legs from different sub-models of the Dire Wolf 
and just mix and match them however you want to. So for example, if you're not happy with that Direwolf Prime right torso, you could just put in a Direwolf Bravo right torso and uh, use the two hard points here for ballistics. Or you could put in, let's say, the Direwolf uh, W right torso and have one hard point for ballistics. Or let's say, for example, you want a different cockpit slot, that's also possible. Direwolf S head, for example, has a hard point for a laser weapon. So that allows you to mix and match. This is only true for Clan Omnimax. And sometimes there are bonuses for Clan Omnimax. And these are for sets of eight. So if you have all the Omnimax parts of that specific model, and that specific model is governed by the center torso slot, you cannot change that. Hang on, I can show you this to you as well. Um, as you can see here in the Mac Lab, you cannot change the center torso. You can remove move the, the torsos, the head or the arms and, and interchange other parts. The CT does not budge, you cannot change that. So if you have a mixing set around the CT, as you can see, eight piece Omnipod bonus right here. That is basically the quirk for Clan Omnimax. You get minus 30% UAC jam chance, you get a missile cooldown of 10% and you get an XP bonus on the max. So sometimes that can be worth it, in most cases it is not. So just my recommendation, just build your mech according to the weapon systems you like. Worry about the quirks um, later, specifically for clan mechs. For Inosphere mechs it can be different, but for clan mechs just don't worry about the quirks too much. So that was a summary. If you're still following me here and if your brain hasn't turned too much yet, Let's talk about armor allocation. Armor allocation is a very important topic and a lot of people get this very, 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 very wrong. So I'm going to show you once and for all the correct way to allocate your armor based on my gameplay philosophy. You know what my gameplay philosophy is? I'll show you. Let's take, for example, this, this uh, beautiful Fafnir right here. This beautiful Fafnir assault mech. I like to call it the Claymore strategy. Front towards enemy. It's even printed on the Claymore. And that's what you should do as well. You should strive to keep your front towards the enemy and keep your back armor as low as possible. Because if you look at stock builds, for example, let's just go to the store. Let's just go to the store and just select a random battle. Let's select, a, uh, let's select uh, I don't know, this, this battle master right here. Let's see what this thing comes with. Look at the amount of back armor this thing comes with. Or let's actually go back. Let's go to the Fafnir. Let's go to the Fafnir that we looked at. And let's look at the amount of back armor that's on that thing. Fafnir 5. 20 back armor. 72 up front. Doesn't have a skill tree yet, but 20 back armor, 72 up front. Okay. And let's compare this with a mech that we're actually running in the field. Two back armor and almost a hundred on the front. Of course, this is with a skill tree in, but as you can see, you have a lot more capacity for taking damage in the face. And mechs want to take damage in the face. You don't want to get shot in the back. Get that mindset out of your heads, guys, that you need back armor to avoid getting shots from the back. The more important thing for you guys is to learn how to put your front towards the enemy, how to be agile, how to as know where enemies might be coming from so you don't get shot in the back in the first place because it doesn't matter if you have 10 back armor or 15 back armor it's still not gonna save you if somebody gets behind you and has any kind of meaningful weaponry so i recommend to you guys keep your armor in the front and at the most at the most and this is for assault max five back armor and no more than that Remember, front towards enemy, you want to have as much armor as possible up front as you can. Um, I'm a little bit of a crazy example, but I like to run with two back armor, and so far it has not been much of a problem. There is an argument to be made to run it with like five back armor so that you don't get um, critted out with a potential artillery strike, but it's happening so rarely for me, guys. I just like to run with two back armor, but by any means, guys, go up to five if you feel comfortable with that, but don't go any higher than that. Keep your front towards the enemy, keep your armor up front, and then you will have better matches. All right, we've talked about the uh, weapon systems. We've talked about the ammo a little bit. I'm going to go into details on all those weapons in a specific guide for those weapon systems. Let's talk about what's available on the equipment screen because it's also very important. 
Well, on the equipment screen, we can have things like AMS, the anti-missile system, which is actually located here in the weapons area. We have things like ECM, Beagle Active Probe, Command Console, targeting computers, cases, and of course the heat sinks are hiding in here as well. Let's talk about them real quick. So the AMS, as well as the laser AMS, both of them are weapons. They basically project a bubble around you with a little minigun that shoots down missiles automatically. The AMS uses ammo. The laser AMS generates heat and doesn't use ammo. Uh, is a little bit heavier though than the normal AMS. AMS coming in at one slot and 0.5 tons. The laser variant that doesn't use ammo comes in at two slots and 1.5 tons. You might think, hey, laser AMS sounds great. Uh, let's use that then. Uh, because it doesn't use ammo and uh, it only uses 1.5 tons. So one ton of ammo plus the AMS uh, is already the same weight as the laser AMS. I highly recommend you don't lose the, laser, the, lose the uh, use the laser AMS because that thing will generate heat as it's shooting down missiles and that might really, really get you killed because of overheating. So unless you're really, really good with switching this on and off, I highly recommend to stay away from this. Just use the normal AMS because that thing will keep going and keep going and keep going until it runs out of ammo and then it's fine. Now, we also have other equipment available. One thing would be the Guardian ECM. If you have a mech that's uh, uh, capable of running Guardian ECM, if it has an ECM hardpoint, always run that mech with Guardian ECM and make sure to always get those Guardian ECM skill points on the skill tree as we've learned in that last video. Very, very important, great supporting thing for your team and also really good to keep you safe. Now, let's talk about Active Probe and Beagle Active Probe. There's also uh, there's the Beagle Active Probe and there's a Active Probe and Light Active Probe and the Clan side. What it does is basically give you a boost on um, targeting range and also targeting gain time. Plus, it increases your mech detection range, this is of course to counter an enemy single ECM. So if there's two ECMs on top of each other, then you will have a problem, but you can counter a single ECM, for example, at uh, 120 uh, meters with this one. Then let's talk about the targeting computers. Targeting computers also boost targeting time. By the way, targeting time, guys, is not locking time. There's a, that's a difference here. Uh, targeting computers come in several different variants from a uh, targeting computer Mark 1 up to a Mark 8. They take up 1 through 8 slots and 1 through 8 tons. So depending on basically on how big you want your targeting computer to be, um, they can get very beefy and very heavy. They will increase your zoom levels. They will increase the uh, boost of your advanced zoom. They will increase your sensor range, your targeting time. They will also increase the range of your lasers, for example, the Mark 8 by 10.5%, increase the projectile speeds on auto cannons and PPCs, and uh, it will increase the crit chances on auto cannons, PPCs, and lasers. Note, no ghosts and no LBX auto cannon, i.e. the shotguns. It will also increase the uh, crit chance for the weapons that we just talked about, um, for example, in this case, up to 8.6% for the Mark 8 can be useful to put in, um, especially on next, for example, that focus on PPC pop tarting. It might be very nice to have in there. The last thing we need to talk about in terms of the equipment screen is case. Case is an ammunition containment system that will prevent the explosion that happens when ammunition blows up not pertaining to Gauss rifle rounds, of course, those don't blow up, but every other bit of info, uh, ammunition, including AMS ammo, can blow up if it's critically hit. And a case will basically keep that explosion contained to that body part of your mech. So for example, if you have a lot of armor, ammo in your left torso and you've got uh, a case in there and the ammo explodes, the explosion gets contained to the left torso. Left arm, of course, blows away with the torso, but the uh, damage will not jump into, for example, the center torso and kill you. So a uh, case can be useful sometimes. In most of our mechs, I do not use it because my ammo is either in arms or, or legs or in positions where it gets used up very quickly. And um, if I die very quickly, then it doesn't matter if my ammunition exploded or not. Um, in any case, I couldn't shoot it. So I think case is a, a borderline case where, <laughs> pun intended, if you find that you die a lot to ammo explosions, think about reallocating your ammo. And if that's not possible, think about getting a case system and then putting most of your ammo in there. Now, important, that is only for uh, Inner Sphere Max. For Clan Max, there is a specific beautiful bonus because Clan Max come with case in every single 
little subcomponent here. So the arms, legs, torsos, head, CT, all are case protected. Of course, um, it's kind of a little bit of a joke because if you have got ammo, for example, in your cockpit and it explodes while well, your head explodes, <laughs> it doesn't help you. But Clan Max are all case protected by default. Okay, we've talked about that. Let's talk about the next thing after engines, which is the consumable screen. And I'm gonna make a specific guide for that as well. So just real quick, there's a couple of different consumables available. Cool Shot, Airstrike, Artillery Strike, and UAV. I recommend you just use the Siebel versions of those and just click on the auto refill button right here. This little check mark makes it so that it automatically gets refilled if you use it up. Otherwise, you would have to do it by hand and nobody wants to do that. Uh, all of these are like 40k a pop. So if you pop double artillery strike and a cool shot in a match, you spend 120,000 Siebels. So yeah, that can be getting a little bit expensive, but uh, that's at even medium to like long term games, uh, amount of games in the game. You just don't care about this little pocket money anymore so um, not a problem you can also buy it of course for mc but i would not recommend that guys don't spend your real money or your mc on consumables spend it on max spend it on colors spend it on paint jobs spend it on bolt-ons spend it on really real cool uh, loudspeakers when you kill somebody but don't spend it on consumables in my opinion okay let's talk about a couple of example max let's build a couple of example max and i'm not going to choose the ones that i recommend in my mech guides as you guys know there are four different long guides with several max and several builds for beginners light max medium max heavy max and assault max linked in the video description below of course so we're just going to choose uh, a different mech here and uh, we're going to build them so let's say for example one interesting light mech is the fleet 20 right and I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to strip that mech from all equipment. And let's have a look at how we would build this mech. So this is this is what you get once you buy the mech and click on that strip mech button down here. That will just strip it of all currently equipped equipment. And you would look at this and you go like, okay, we've got an ECM hard point. We've got a couple of laser hard points. We've got an AMS hard point. Well, what could we do with this? Well, as I said already, guys, if you have an ECM, that's the first thing you pop in because that is the main feature of this mech. Then we have to think about, okay, what kind of weapons can we fit here? Well, we can fit up to five different laser weapons. This is a very light mech, only 20 tons. So we would put in, for example, medium lasers because they have a really good weight ratio to uh, damage and also heat generated. So we would put in five medium lasers, okay? Um, let's put this back to the standard as well. Okay, so we would have five medium lasers in at this point. Now that, and then you start thinking about, okay, do you have the ability to do jump jets? No, okay. Um, I'm not sure if I want to have an AMS in there yet or not. With ECM, generally, I don't like to run AMS because it gives your position away. So let's say this would be your build, right? Maybe maybe the armor would even be up here. Maybe that would even be stock armor. So the armor, I've already switched that to two back armor for light max. Everything else is fully armored up. Uh, at this point, you would say, okay, let's see what kind of engine we can put in. Okay, well, we got the choice between XL or light or standard. We're in a light max, so generally speaking, you want the lightest engine possible. That would be an XL engine. One thing that we also need to mention about engine, guys, is that some engine sizes have the same weight. And we can showcase this right, quite nicely right here. The XL engine 150 has the same weight as the XL engine 170 in this case. Okay, so let's say we wanted to go for the biggest engine possible, in this case an XL engine 170. That gives us a top speed of almost 150 kph. What else can we put into this mech? Well, this mech seems to be capable of running mask, mask, movement assisted, uh, whatever it is. Uh, it basically allows you to boost the speed of your mech as well as your turn rate and the acceleration and deceleration. Uh, you have to press a button for it. The default button is Alt. Um, you will see a little uh, gauge go up. If it goes over 70%, you will start damaging the internals of your legs. So you got to be careful. But Mask, generally speaking, is a really, really nice tool because it allows your mech to be a lot more agile. You know, at a corner, for example, you mask forward at 200% acceleration, shoot somebody and then mask backward at the acceleration as well. It's going to shake your uh, crosshair a little bit. So you got to keep careful about that. But generally speaking, Mask is worth it. So we've got five medium lasers. We've got mask we've got two tons available if you look up here you can see that there are some problems with our mech i require four more heat sinks well 
That's a problem. Let's see for let's see first here. Heat management 0.92. I already told you guys you go double heat sinks for most mechs. 1.16, so heat management is looking better already. Again, guys, this is just a rough value. Don't take this at face value. The calculations are not 100% correct. We need four extra heat sinks, right? Well, there is one, there is two, and that's it. We can't put any more heat sinks in. We need two more, but we can't put any more in. So that's it. We can't build this mech like that. Well, this is where the tinkering part comes in. For example, it's a light mech. It's very small. We don't necessarily need the armor on the cockpit. We can lower that down. We still have a lot of tonnage to fill, but remember we could, for example, go endo steel structure because there's a lot of empty slots right now. Boom, 18.2 tons. Almost there, but I need about 0.2 tons less. So let's go with the armor, go light ferrule, and boom, we would already have it. We can add two more heat sinks, and at this point, this mech will run. The only problem right now that the game complains about is it's got no armor on the cockpit, but that's all right because uh, we're not getting plan we're not planning on getting shot in the cockpit with a mech this small and this fast, anyways. Unless we stand still and then we deserve to die. But honestly, anything that kills us through the cockpit kills us through the armor as well. So don't worry about that, guys. It's fine. Well, could we go full ferrofibers? No, we can't. We do not have enough. Critical slots, as you can see, the mech has one or more slot violations, so ferrofibers is not possible, light ferrofibers, however, is going to be possible, and that would be your mech build. Let's do another couple of example builds right here. Um, let's say, for example, you wanted to build a... just randomly choosing a mech here, or semi-randomly choosing a mech. Let's say you wanted to go with the old, good old Hunchback 4P. That thing is known as a nice little laser boat. And uh, let's say, for example, go ahead and strip this mech. Try not to remember what I had in this thing. Go back to standard, go back to standard. This is how you would purchase this thing. Again, the first thing you would do is to allocate the armor properly. But let's say, for example, you have this on maximum. You haven't really changed this. And I realize, guys, this is a long video, but I just want to give you guys a couple of examples of how I build mechs, how I think about building mechs, so that you can think in a similar way. Okay, naked mech right now. Let's see what kind of weapon systems we have right here. We've got a lot of energy hard points. If I am correct about the mech stats, there should be something about a heat scale limit plus two for the inner sphere medium lasers. Yes, it is right here. So remember what I said, six medium lasers is the uh, maximum for medium lasers, but if you get a quirk for it, why not use it? So this side torso has extra armor and it can house six weapons uh, of the energy kind. So let's put six medium lasers in there. Medium lasers, always a very good choice. Um, I could put a medium laser in the left arm or I could put it in the head. I've got one in the right arm. I'm going to put that medium laser. Well, here's a choice that you have to make. Do you want your alpha strike to be on target as much as possible and as close together as possible? In this case, you would put the lasers like this because you could put them all very close together. But what if you, for example, want two medium lasers in your arms so you could shoot down UAVs? Well, in this case, the mech would look like this. As you can see, you're losing the laser up here and you're getting a laser below the arm. Um, that has, of course, different problems if you're trying to shoot over a ridge, for example, but it would allow you to get more damage on a UAV because you're shooting two medium lasers at it and not just one. That's again personal choice. I would put that medium laser up here in the head slot, have another good high mounted weapon and have the ability to get all the lasers on target. And if I can hit it with the right arm, I can hit it with everything else basically as well. Okay, now that's done. What kind of engine are we going to put in here? Um, I'm definitely not going to use an XL engine with a hunchback because it gets uh, very easily destroyed in the side torso. So I would probably use a light engine. The maximum size of light engine we have is a light 275 that gives us 90 kph for this mech. That would be fine. Uh, I don't have anything else inside here yet. So uh, let's think about first things. First, double heat sinks is what we would like to have. And since we have a lot of medium lasers here, I want to have a lot of double heat sinks. So. Let's go ahead, amp up the double heat sinks as much as possible. And as you can see, we don't even have much choice for what kind of armor upgrades we want. We could go, for example, with uh, try and go for light ferro and gain a little bit of extra tonnage. And uh, that would allow us to 
Yeah, we could go also go full ferro, but that doesn't do anything for us. We already have the maximum size engine already, and we have everything else maxed out. But we could go light ferro and add another double heatsink, for example. This would be possible. Or, let's say, for example, we wanted an AMS system. Or, let's say, for example, we wanted to go with a standard engine. I mean, if this mech gets crit out with both side torsos, you would still have that medium laser in the cockpit to shoot with. So you could think about going with a standard engine here. We're saving, what is this, 18 tons on the light 275. The standard 275 is 21 tons. So, yeah, you're 21.5. You're actually adding quite a bit of tonnage. So if you wanted to go with a standard engine, you would have to remove a couple of double heat sinks. Drop in the standard engine, put this one heatsink internally, and you have 0.5 tons left available, but you also got a lot more critical slots to work with now. So for example, can we use endo steel now? The answer is yes, we can. So all of a sudden you've got 47.6 tons in total use right now. You can add double heatsinks galore, and for example, lower the arm here, because we're not going to use that left arm anyways, um, and add another double heatsink to our mech make this mech run even cooler than before. Um, or we could just drop a double heatsink and use an AMS system. That would also work. So for example, let's say we want to be a little bit more team play oriented. We drop in the AMS system here. We add one ton of ammo. We can shave off a little bit from the head to get that. Drop in one ton of AMS ammo into the leg. Um, don't put ammo in your CT if you don't have to, because if it gets crit, uh, it explodes. And if your CT explodes, you're dead. So I recommend not to do that. Maybe remove one more ton of ammo here, get one point of armor on the arm. So it appears that if it has a little bit of armor in your paper doll and you would be golden not a bad build would that would that one would definitely work could you tinker this even further Nah, we don't have enough empty slots so this would probably be the build that you would end up using okay let's do this for heavy mech real quick as well maybe with not as much explanations but uh, let's say for example you want to use a uh, something with a hybrid build let's say what would be what would be a good example bum, 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 bum. Uh, Champion 2N might be a good example. This one is an MRM build, but let's say, for example, you didn't have that. Let's say you wanted to do something different. Um, I see ballistic hard points, I see missile hard points, I see laser hard points. Let's say I want to go ballistic and laser. So I would uh, think about, well, I could probably fit, fit a heavy gauss rifle here, and I could probably fit medium lasers to add to that, because that is a good combination, medium lasers and gauss rifle. Um, but what would we do then? Because we don't have much tonnage for anything else. Well, could we go with a light engine? Because XL engine, probably not recommended here. Light engine and XL do not work because the heavy gauss just takes up a lot of critical slots, as you can see. So we don't have two slots for a light engine. We don't have three slots right here for an XL engine. So it has to be a standard. And that would mean we have to use a standard, for example, 275 or 270, depending on how much ammo we want to bring. Um, we are not going to use these arms, they will just basically be shields. Um, so we would lower the arm armor completely. We gain about uh, enough tonnage to bring, what is that, 3.5 tons of ammo. If I shave off a little bit of the head. Okay. And that would be it. But as you can see, we've got a lot of critical slots left available. Can we go full ferrofibrous? The answer is yes. So in this case, for example, we could add another ton of heavy gauss ammo, or we could add a double heatsink to the engine. And that would also, I think, be a workable build. You could also lower the legs, one armor each, or the head, one, two armor, just to get the arms up, and that would be your build. You've got a heavy gauss rifle and four medium lasers in this mech now. Nice firepower, speed is going to be at 75 kph, nothing too fancy, but quite tanky and can do a lot of damage, especially over time, and with... This amount of lasers and this amount of uh, cooling, you should be running fairly cool. No pun intended. Okay, let's jump into an assault mech and let's come up with a, a missile build. And I'm going to think, yeah, let's, let's do a MRM build. And a good example for an MRM build would be the Wolf Phoenix Nightstar. So let's check that one out. That way we also showcase an MRM build that I haven't shown yet on one of the guides. So let's say, for example, you see this mech right here, Nightstar Wolf Phoenix. You know it has two hardpoints in each torso for missiles, 
and you've got two hard points in each arm for lasers or for any kind of energy weapons and you want to go run this with missiles now there are a lot of missile builds that people can run but for assault mechs with this kind of symmetrical um, um, order of hard points there is one build that hits like a truck it requires you to be a little bit more experienced in the game to not overheat yourself to death because the heat scale limit for the MRMs is two at the same time. So you have to shoot this left side, right side or right side and then left side and don't alpha strike it or you will start cooking yourself. But yeah, you've got all these MRM launchers in here right now. You've set your armor. Um, let's say for example, the I'm just going to reset the armor right here so that you guys can see what else goes into tinkering with this, but always start with maxed out armor. You can always lower it later, but it's hard to <laughs> find extra space or extra tonnage to increase the armor. So yeah, we would have this. Okay, we've got our MRMs in, now we need to think about an engine. We've got the weapons in that we want, let's think about the engine. Well, standard 300 it would be possible, or if we wanted to, we could go with a light engine. A light engine 335. That will give us a lot of speed, but alas, it doesn't allow us to put in more ammo because right now we have zero ammo. So let's say we went with endo steel structure, 89.9. Okay, well, that will allow us to bring a little bit of ammo. Now, let's say we have one ton, two tons, three tons, four tons. Another point I'm going to make later on is that you should bring for a weapon system like this, you should strive to bring at least 1.5 tons per weapon of ammo and uh, this would work but again the heat doesn't look too good you can't put any internal heat sinks in and four tons of ammo is definitely not enough for four mrm 30 launchers so how do we tweak this well we have to go ahead and size down the engine to a light 300 light 300 is one of the more common engines for inner sphere max we put two internal double heat sinks in to increase our cooling and now we have to think about okay what else do we want to do well I would definitely bring more ammo. So I would definitely bring two tons of ammo here potentially, maybe even a ton of ammo here in the cockpit because it's fully armored. And uh, now we have to think about, okay, well, what else can we do? We have two tons available and we have two critical slots available. So you could go ahead and put one ton of ammo each in each arm, potentially. Or you could say, I'm okay with seven tons of ammo. I want to have a bigger engine. Let's see what happens if I completely strip my arms. Let's say what happens. Let's say I completely strip my arms, 100% strip. What can I get in here? And you can see all of a sudden that light 335 is possible. So we put that in. Um, and if we then go ahead and lower the legs a bit, we could actually potentially add another double heatsink. Then even out the legs at like maybe 71 each or so, give the arms a tap each, or maybe two, I don't know, and this mech will be done, almost. There. So this could be done as well, and at this point you would have a solid mech that you could use that has some better cooling as before. We even were able to get the light 335 engine in for the extra speed and the extra cooling. We got the internal heat sinks in there, and we got enough ammo. If we go back to the other build that we had before, let's see how much that differs. Well, it has a light 325, it has one ton total more ammo, a little bit more armor on the arms, a little bit less armor on the legs. So we ended up fairly close to the build that I was using anyways. Okay, now we've talked about a couple of example builds. Um, let's talk about something that is important to know, and that is called crit padding. And crit padding um, is very simply explained. Let me go back to, let's say, that champion we had earlier. Let's say we were running with a, a Gauss Rifle here. Now the Gauss Rifles have a higher chance to be crit and explode than any other component. So Gauss Rifles are at risk to get destroyed. As you can see, a Gauss Rifle right here, it has uh, seven slots in total. A heavy Gauss Rifle will actually go ahead and occupy 11 slots in total. So um, let's say if you have a gun like this in your torso, um, you have an 11 out of 12 chance that something might be critically hit because it occupies that many slots. And crit padding is very simply explained. You put something in there that um, is also likely to be crit, but you'd much rather have that be crit than the Gauss Rifle. So you're giving the crit roll more chances to crit something else than the Gauss Rifle. And you could do this in two ways. You could do this, for example, with double heat sinks, or 
in this case just one double heatsink, you can't put in more, or you could do this with ammo. Let's say you had a light engine in there, you would add three tons of gauze ammo. I'm gonna add the light engine so you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna add the light engine right here, and boom. So that engine takes up two slots, the gauze rifle takes the seven slots, and the three slots are put in with gauze ammo. Gauze ammo cannot explode, so nothing happens. So if the gauze ammo gets critical hit, well, not a problem. So that is what's called crit padding. You're reducing the chance to get a vital component crit out. Let's talk about um, ammo consumption order. What's the ammo consumption order max? Because you can put ammo in any of these parts. What is the consumption order? Well, um, I've seen several uh, items throughout the sources, but the one that I've quote, quoted most is first, ammo gets consumed from center torso slots. If nothing is available there anymore, it goes to the right torso, then to the left torso, then it takes the ammo from the uh, left arm, then from the right arm, then from the left leg, then from the right leg, and last but not least, from the head slot. I'm not positive whether that head slot is really the last slot being used, but it's important to know it takes it first from CT and then from the side torsos. So it is safe, for example, to have your missile rounds in your CT if you have a lot of missile weapons because it's going to use up that um, missile ammo very, very quickly. So once this is drained, if there's no more ammo in your CT, well, if you get crit in your CT, uh, if, if there's no ammo to be crit, it can't explode, right? Okay. Then let's talk about weapon convergence real quick, because that's also something that needs to go into your consideration for building. We've briefly touched upon this with the Annihilator, but let's say, for example, we compare an Annihilator with a Timberwolf. This Annihilator right here, if you go to the um, mech overview right here, as you can see, the weapons are fairly close to the center axis of the mech. That means these are much more likely to hit the same spot that you're shooting at because they're starting from a grouped up position very close to the center axis of your mech and they're not far out like for example the arms would be right here but if you compare this for example with a timberwolf timberwolf is a nice example because it has convergence issues with some weapons let's say the timberwolf warrant right here which can run Dakar in its arms and if you look at just how far outside both of these weapons are, these are ultra cannon tens. you can think that uh, because of that it'll have um, more issues with converging the bullets on the same target, especially you will see this when targets are moving left to right or right to left and you're trying to shoot them, uh, you're trying to lead the target, um, there are some issues where if you're trying to shoot both weapons at the same time, um, there's a chance you will just overshoot with both of them. So at longer ranges, the target's moving left to right or right to left, it's actually more beneficial to just shoot these uh, single because if you try to shoot them at the same time they will try to converge at the point where you're aiming at which is in front of the target but potentially further away because there's nothing in between you and um, the horizon basically and so the shot just overshoots because it's trying to converge at an imagined point further further away but maybe just give us a little bit of try guys uh, try, try it out in the testing mode and uh, you will see very quickly what I mean with that okay we talked about convergence, we talked about ammo consumption. Let's talk about sensible ammo ratios. What are sensible ammo ratios? As I already said, I would say at least 1.5 tons per specific weapon that uses ammo. Uh, let's have a couple of examples right here. For example, this is an Annihilator uh, Lerm boat. <laughs> That's Dr. Lermenstein. Uh, we've got four Lerm 20s and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 tons of ammo. So more than two tons per missile launcher. Let's talk about, let's take for example this Annihilator right here, it's using Ultra AC 5s and Ultra AC 10s, we can see that it has an Ultra AC 10 ammo, one, two, three, four tons of Ultra AC 10 ammo, four, two UI like 10s, so two tons per weapon, and it has one, two, three, four, five tons of Ultra AC 5 ammo, that is uh, 2.5 tons per weapon. Because these are the only weapon systems, we may need to make sure that we have enough ammo to finish the match. That's enough to do about 1400-1500 damage. Okay. 
Let's take another example. Let's take the Griffin to end that I showed earlier. Again, let's have a look at the weapons to ammo ratio. We've got four SRM6 of Artemis, and we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tons of ammo. So we have about a little bit more than 1.5 tons per Artemis launcher. Again, 1.5 is the minimum amount that I would bring. Um, the fewer weapons you have, the, that's, it goes more towards the two ratio. So for example, if you have one single MRM 40 launcher, I would always bring at least two tons of ammo. It also has to do something with how much rounds get shot, uh, how many rounds get shot per single salvo. Okay. Well, now we've talked about how to build your mech. Let's talk about some common mech building sins that I see. Some common sins I see in mech builds. And let's take an example here. Um, with, let's take this health spawn as an example. Now, if you look at this mech right here, we've got three streak SRM6s, we've got Guardian ECM, and we've got just streak SRM ammo throughout the mech. And one sin that, for example, I have committed in the past is I had my mech built like this. I had all the streak SRM ammo concentrated in the side torso with the weapon systems. And I didn't think much about it, but as I looked at it later on and talked about it with some guys on the live stream, we came to the conclusion, wait a second, this is a bomb right here, because if this side torso gets a critical hit in one of the ammo slots, that ammo is going to explode, and you are going to explode because you have an XL engine. So it is much better to spread out that big nuclear bomb of ammo throughout other parts of the mech that are not as likely to get shot. So for example, the legs or one side torso and the head right here. As you've learned from the ammo consumption order, that ammo is gonna get used up first, then the legs in this case, and last but not least, the head. Much better, no more bombs in our mech. Another sin I see all the time is mechs running around like that. You shoot them in the back for some reason and they have like 25 or 30 back armor, some absurd armor number. And you might think, hey, that's great. You're protected from shots from behind. Guys, I taught you front towards enemy. You need that armor up front. If you don't have it up front, you can't trade as effectively. That is like one less full salvo from any mech that you can take uh, or one more salvo or one less salvo that you can take before you explode, one less trade that you can take, one time less that you can actually expose and shoot with getting counter fire on. So make sure to have as much front armor as possible. In this case, we even only have one back armor, the bare minimum. Okay, another issue that I see all the time is mechs bringing too few weapons and being completely over tons. So for example, you see um, a Marauder 2C clan assault mech um, at its glorious, glorious style and size. Um, the thing has 85 tons and then somebody runs it with two PPCs, which is the weapon systems you would run on a 45 or 50 ton mech or sometimes even a light mech. So make sure that you bring the appropriate amount of weapons for your weight class and do not undergun your mech. On the other side of things, don't overgun your mech. Don't bring so many weapons that you're producing so much heat that you can barely shoot your weapons or worst case, uh, shoot once and then have to cool down for 30 seconds. That is also not a good thing to have, guys. You need to be able to keep firing and keep doing damage in a reasonable way. There is doing upfront burst damage and there is doing damage over time. Burst damage is important, but also damage over time is important. If you can only shoot once and then go AFK for half a minute, that's not going to help you. And a way that you can determine whether something is too hot to shoot or not is the testing grounds. So for example, let's take this Kodiak right here. We have a total of four clan AC-10s and an ERPPC. There is a heat scale limit of two for the AC-10s. So this has two weapons in ghost heat with the AC-10s. But these are AC-10s, they're not that hot, so it actually can be used. And this can be alpha struck. And if we go to the testing grounds right here, down there, the little button, and the testing grounds, and then maybe go to a map like Kenny Network, which is a good average map. You can test how hot your mech gets while shooting. And you can get a feel of how hot your mech gets and whether you need to add more cooling or maybe remove a couple of weapons, maybe change some large lasers to some mediums, get a bigger engine. That will allow you to do that. For example, let's say we are running around for a mech here and we are shooting somebody here, full alpha strike. As you can see, that put our heat up to, what was that? 28, 30% or so, and 
this is not this is not problematic. We can shoot this. Wait for a cooldown to happen. Your PPC is ready again, and we alpha strike this again. And we could probably do this twice more, even while walking, which incurs a little bit more heat. There's one. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. We're still walking, we're still walking, we're twisting, we're twisting, and we're shooting again on this guy. Boom. And we're still twisting, we're still walking, we're still walking, and we could shoot again. Boom. And now we pop a cool shot, and that would allow us to shoot again. So, as you can see, this mech, even though it incurs a lot of ghost heat, it is still fine to shoot. It's still fine to shoot. So go ahead, make use of te the testing grounds here, guys, to make sure that you bring enough weapons, but not too many. Another sin that I am sometimes uh, beholden to is forgetting my consumables. So guys, when you're building a mech, always make sure to check that consumables uh, slot and make sure to always bring the appropriate consumables. Most likely, the first consumable you add is going to be a cool shot and then maybe an artillery strike or UAVs or whatnot. Oh, look at that. I have sinned again. This thing can run a secondary cool shot. Well, good thing we're making this guide, right? Okay. The next thing I want to talk about, which is a sin that I have been preaching against for so long, and it is preaching against the Swiss army knife builds. Guys, I've talked about this before in the beginning of the video. This is not a tabletop game. Do not bring bracket builds. Bracket builds or Swiss army knife builds means that you're trying to have a weapon system to engage at every range. So you let's let's take for example, let's take this idea. Let's take this idea. Let's go to an assault mech. Let's go to a classic Atlas. Yeah, let's go to a classic Atlas. Classic Atlas D, nice and beefy mech. If you run this as a stock build, you will have an LRM-20, SRM-6, four medium lasers, and an AC-20. So you have weapon systems to engage targets at all ranges, right? You've got the LRM missiles at long range, and then you get closer, and then you can use your medium lasers and your AC-20, and when you're really close, then you use your SRM-6 as well, and you can deal with all sorts of challenges at all ranges. Guys, let me be very frank with you here. This is bullshit. This build gets destroyed by any build that is focused around what it's doing. Build your mechs to excel at something. Don't build your, build your mech to be mediocre or really bad at everything. Build it to excel. Because this amount of weapon systems, SRM-6, AC-20, and 4 medium lasers for brawling, it's not horrible, but it's definitely undergunned for the size of this mech. Compare it to a dedicated build, for example. Let's say, let's stay with the Atlas. Let's stay with the Atlas. Um, you've seen that first build that was a, a lore build or a classic Battletech build. Let's look at a different Atlas model, even the same Atlas model, and look at how I would run this. Heavy Gauss Rifle and double MRM-30s. We've got range, 600 meters on the MRMs. Heavy Gauss Rifle can hit at 600 as well. The closer targets get, the more damage the Heavy Gauss Rifle does. No lasers, AMS is in there. Armor, of course, up front, front towards enemy, 165 center torso armor. Have fun going through that. And now imagine going up with your bracket build Atlas against this thing. It's going to destroy you. And if you think your LRM-20 is going to do anything to this thing, no, it's not. It's got armor galore. The L one LRM-20 that splatters across this mech is not going to make it laugh. It's going to make it cry. Because it's, 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 uh, it's crying for you if you have the bracket build. So, build your mechs specific for the role you want it to be in. This, for example, is an assault leader. It has the ability to hit targets at longer ranges, and the closer you get, the more damage it does. Another example would be an LRM boat. A lot of people don't like LRM boats, and a lot of people build shitty LRM boats. I'm going to show you how to build a proper LRM boat. Let's take, for example, a very, very powerful LRM boat, the Warhammer 2C2. Um, this thing right here. You will notice something. It's got LRMs galore, it's got ammo galore, and it's got a tag laser. There are no backup weapons. Backup plans are for losers. You're building a specialized mech that excels at fire support. This mech, left unchecked, will destroy the enemy team, unless they have a huge amount of AMS. They will destroy the enemy team. That is what it excels at. And some people might be saying, but you need lasers to defend against blah, 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 blah. No, you don't. You've got 11 teammates, guys. Get that bracket build mentality out of your heads. Build something that is dedicated for a specific role. This thing is long to medium range fire support. It, you will find this mech at about 300, 400 meters, shelling the enemy with LRMs galore. 
That is what it excels at. That is what it's going to do. And it's even going to share armor at that range with your teammates. So it's checking all the right boxes. And for any targets that get up close and chase you down, that's what your teammates are for. Your team if your teammates are not doing that, well, then they're piss poor teammates. But don't worry about that, guys. Two extra lasers are not going to change your fate in this kind of setting. They might save your ass one time out of 20. That's pointless. Build your max for a specific role and stick with that role. If you want to have a brawler, build a close range. If you want to have a learn boat, build a long range. If you want to have an ATM boat, build the best possible ATM boat that you can build. And don't worry about extra weapons. Don't worry so much about different ranges and different roles, guys. Build your mech to one role. I hope this really got across now. Build your mech to serve one role and serve that role well. For the other roles, there's 11 teammates. Another mech builds in, very important, bring the right ammo. That can happen, for example, if you're swapping out streaks for uh, normal SRMs, or you might put in different weapon systems, you might have a laser in there, um, and then you had like LRMs in there, and all of a sudden you put SRMs in, but you forgot to switch out the ammo, and all of a sudden you've got SRM launchers with LRM ammo in there. Um, you will not get a warning sign because uh, you already have like one working weapon system equipped with a laser. So be careful about that. Make sure you have the right ammo for your weapons equipped. And um, also, don't fall into quirk traps. What are quirk traps? Well, speaking simply, we've talked about quirks. Some mechs do have specific bonuses. But that doesn't mean you have to build your mechs around these bonuses, especially if these bonuses are just very, very low end. So um, let's say, for example, you've got a mech that can run only one laser, but it has like a 5% heat bonus for large lasers. Does it make sense to put that large laser in? Or do you want to go for uh, medium lasers and some DACA, for example, or medium lasers and an MRM launcher that completely forgoes that quirk because that quirk in itself just doesn't give you enough bang for your buck. So don't fall into quirk traps. Don't think, oh, because this mech has a quirk for UX10s, I need to put UX10s in there. No, you don't. You don't. You can, but you don't. Okay, well, I guess this covers most of the points that I wanted to cover. I hope I didn't forget too much. If you guys have any remaining questions, if I if I have completely removed everything that was clear in your minds by now, then I have uh, succeeded in basically garbling up everything that is possible to garble up. But guys, seriously, so I hope this guide will help you to understand a little bit better how to build mechs, what you can do with mechs, what to, what to do with mechs, what not to do with mechs. If you're looking for specific builds, use the search tool on my channel. There's over 2,000 videos on MWO stuff. If there is a mech that you're looking for, there's a high chance I've built, done several builds on that mech in specific videos. If you have any questions, just hop onto the live stream and ask them. Uh, we are live with MWO Saturdays and Sundays. And of course, you can hop in on any other day of the week and just ask your questions. They will always be answered. If this video was helpful to you, share it with your friends. Share it with people that might need it. Share it with people that uh, might benefit from this so we see better builds and have people have more fun with the game that we all enjoy. And guys, don't fall into the meta builds trap. Meta builds are really, really good builds. No questions about that. But don't think that these are the only builds that you should play. Build variety. Play the mechs, like, uh, build the mechs like you want to play them. And then have, just have fun. Just have fun. Enjoy the game, guys. Thanks for watching. This has been TTB. Take care.